I want to talk to you about um, church architecture in the uh, African uh, 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 in the African vernacular. Now, there isn't really much vernacular church architecture in Africa, and that's 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 what this talk is about. What might it look like, or why why isn't there um, su such a kind of an art architecture, and, and why should we as a church consider uh, a, a African church art architecture. So that's, that's the, the, the basis of, of what I want to talk about. Um, but before we get there, um, this guy, um, his name is Dier Bedo Francis Kere. I'm sure a French person could pronounce his name better than, than, than I, uh, but he, he's from uh, the Kino Faso, which is near Gagana, some somewhere on the northern west part of South, South Africa. And he won what is called the Pritzker Prize in 2022. Now, you, you should understand what the Pritzker Prize is. It is the Nobel Peace Prize of our architecture, the, the best of the best of the best receive this prize. And um, and Ke Kerere was the first African person, or the, the, the first, well, I should say the first person from Africa to receive this, this prize. Um, so when we think about it, it in the architectural world, this, this was a huge, huge step forward um, last year, because finally we have a truly African person who's, who has won this uh, Pritzker Prize, um, and uh, yeah, so the the Pritzker Prize is awarded to the person who produces, um, uh, I guess, the, the most groundbreaking work. Um, some uh, some others are people like Frank Franco Gay Gary. Norman Foster and a few others, famous architects from from the West. Um, I, I want to show you some of his work. Now, this is vernacular architecture, or I should say, contemporary vernacular architecture at its best. This is superb work, and if you don't understand what you're seeing here, just know it's really outstanding. Um, this, this is the Kondo Primary School. Um, and I can't remember if it was this one or, or Tony Alset he did, but when I was in second year architecture, which was about 20 years ago, uh, I went to a conference and um, they, they showed us some of his work and there was a, a bit of a, a, like a short film about him. Um, and I think this may have been the one that they showed him that he, he spoke about. Um, but see, see, see how that, that roof just, just, just floats in, in, in the air. And then you, you have those fine steel trusses. Look at the, that, that, that brickwork and how earth-like that brickwork is. And then look also at the openings. I'll talk about openings a bit, a bit later on. And those, those two like square openings and the way it just sits on the side it looks like it belongs there right this is good vernacular church, uh, not church architecture just just <laughs> good vernacular school uh, architecture um th this is a school as well um again note how it sits on the side look at the the, the vertical timber lats um that that screens the uh the side and then those, those co concrete, what look like clear stories, those big square things, that's, that's actually um, inspired by a, a school chair, you know, the, the, the chairs that, that uh, children sit on, so, so that those blocks are uh, upright and then it, it, it goes hot, 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 it goes, let me try and it goes, horizontal, which you can't see here, but that's, that's what inspired this. Um, but it just, it just sits like, it sits so well on the side, it, it b b belongs there, is used um, 
some of the materials from the site, and it's especially the timber. And you you can see some of the timber just lying there to the uh, left hand side of of the screen. This is is another one of his works. I'm not sure where this this pro project um, is. Um, I'm not sure if it is in Africa or in England, um, but it, it still has that strong um, African vernacular style. Um, try, try and guess what inspired this shape. Um, I'm sure you would have thought of those African hats that that, that uh, African women some, sometimes wear. This, this is what we would call a per, per, Pavilion, Serpentine Pavilion. If you're in a uh, first year architecture, this is the kind of thing that all students would de design as one of their first pro pro projects. So some kind of uh, pavilion or say it's sacred space. All right, I've got this thing on my. Um, I'm trying to hide this. How do I hide toolbars? There you go. That's better. Um, right. Then we have the Burkina Institute of Te 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 of Technology (BIT). Makes you think of of MIT. Um, but again, look at how earthy this form of architecture looks. The uh, brickwork, the clay. Um, the uh, timber uh, uh, lattice roof, um, and then all the the BC ceiling, um, and it's 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 got that that that, that deep sense of, of place. All right, and then this one looks more uh, more like it could belong belong in the west. It is the National Park in Mali. Um, look at that roof and that 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 that, that protein roof. It seems as if he enjoys these these protein roofs, roofs which work for him quite, quite quite well here. I cannot find too much information on this one, um, but it it's got that sense of place. It's got that that sense of of the necklace. Perhaps not as strong as the first three. That, that 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 you've seen but it still it still has it, that sense of it it's doing it's doing something on the site and it's 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 it fits well okay now that there's a bit of what what we sell celebrate or, or what uh, uh, architects have sell celebrated um, over the past year the the work of um, Francis Carey, uh, but these these are some of the questions I I have asked myself as I have begun to to um, reflect on African on African vernacular architecture. We are going to go into African church architecture soon too. Okay, so what is African vernacular architecture? I've got a small piece to read here, and excuse me, I, I have two two screens. Um, so if, if I look away, like, it just means that I have some notes that I want to share, um, but it, it, it's quite short. So uh, I define African vernacular architecture as those buildings on the co co continent that one, employ indigenous building techniques Technology from their specific region to employ available natural resources and local labor. Three, respond meaningfully to its specific landscape, vegetation, climate, and other economic factors. And four, is traditional and cultural. That is what I mean when I'm talking about. African vernacular architecture, and of course, you've you've just seen some great examples of that. Uh, let me just have a look here quickly for you. 
All right, then what are some of the challenges and concerns? There, there are quite, quite, quite a few. The, 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 the one is de 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 deforestation in Africa, I mean, some places floods, um, and in fault, fault fires as well, which, which means that there, there are less resources to, to work with. Um, so, to, to, so there are times in a case like that, it, it is better to employ for foreign re resources from elsewhere. Um, so that, that is a bit, a bit of a concern. Uh, yeah, so, so there, there is a a, sub, a a substitution or even an abandoning of the traditional architecture. How do Africans view vernacular architecture? I was intrigued by this when I started to research this. One would expect, and I, I know there are Africans here, so I, I, I don't mean it in any way to offend. In fact, a lot of what I'm saying comes from from African architects. Um, Africans generally um, feel that the, that vernacular architecture is is old fashioned and archaic. So, to, so they prefer more contemporary building techniques and um, and, and structures. Um, and, to, and, to, and so what they have started to do is, is move away from the, the vernacular architecture, which of course is extremely sad because it means that the, the culture and heritage is diminishing in the sense one should see um, architecture as a, a tactile expression of one's c c culture um, and as i've said uh, elsewhere um, church architecture is a tactile expression of one's christian faith um, and so it is quite important that we maintain the architectural motifs and, and styles within our communities. Why should we promote African vernacular architecture? Well, I've just, I've just answered that. So if we, if we don't preserve the traditions of the past, it will be lost. Um, and a lot, a lot of it is already lost. What 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 is strange too is that um, Africans uh, don't, don't seem to um, pre preserve the the info, information of their architecture. There's I think one guy from the um, states or, or perhaps two who who, who has um, t t taken photographs. And he doc documents all kinds of African art architecture. In fact, the the picture here, and you will see a few a few more actually come from his database. Um, that's not to say that all Africans don't care. I'm sure 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 they do. But there's this move towards more contemporary style art. Architecture and, and 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 part of my talk is to help um, pre create a, sol a solution between these two um, to be, 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 be these two tests or, or between the tension of vernacular architecture and contemporary architecture as well. But of course, focusing on the church. It, it would be great to hear from some of my. African co 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 colleagues, what they think in the Q Q and A. Okay, this was quite quite fun too. Um, 
These are what I call the church motifs in Africa. And I have lived and worked in Kenya for three and a half years and have attended, I think, every single one of, I've, I've attended about four, four of these. Um, so the one is, or the, the first one is the Watton and Door or the concrete church. Um, so what makes this a church? Well, it's, it's the cross. And, excuse me, and, and past the entrance of it uh, identifies this as a church. Um, this is only vernacular architecture in the terms that it is water and door. Um, but of course, there are co concrete um, uh, uh, structures that have the same shape. Um, there's, there isn't anything vernacular about that. Um, but this, this, this is extremely co co common church in um, rural parts in Africa. Uh, uh, and as I've said, I, I have um, been in church service is in church services in these. And in fact, I think I, I, I even slept, slept in one once. Um, then the traditional church. Um, this is like your Anglican church or your Presbyterian or Methodist church. It's got that European style. Um, which I don't know about you, but it, it makes me think of of colonialism, um, which I don't believe is the the best approach for um, church architecture in in Africa. Um, it may have been workable um, in the past, um, but but it's. But, but still then, I'm sure some, some of you would argue, no, it, 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 it wasn't ever workable. Um, again, uh, I've actually preached in a church similar to this in, in Kenya. Um, but it, 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 it's got the, the, the bells, it's got the cross, the arch windows and the arch door. Um, it looks like a church. Then we have what does not look like a church, what I call a shop front church. And uh, I'm sure many of you have seen these. This one, this specific one is called the Triumphant Church of God. Um, I should read you these. They are quite fun. Um, I'm going to see if I can quickly find it for you. Uh, it won't take me long. Uh, let me go here. Let me look at my document and then I'll... I'll have to do a quick search, but it is quite a, uh, maybe here. Yes, here it is. Um, Shafran Church. Yeah. So while I was in Kenya, I, I love to um, walk past them or drive past these churches and then read their signs because they are quite fun. The, these are real church signs. Um, the, he, the Healing Tsunami Ministries, Run for Your Life Ministry. Open Heaven Ministries, the Resurrection Temple of God, and then we have, as we have here, the, the Triumphant Church. Um, and they, they are quite fun. I'm, I'm not too sure why they have such unusual names. It might make sense into some, it may make sense in some of the other context, but um, I find it quite strange. Oh, they, there was a, a church, um, I think, in Kisumu, Kenya, that we drove past. And the church was on B B B B Banana Street. So, of course, the church was called the, the Banana Church of God. <laughs> um, I mean, it makes sense that it was, it, it, it was, named, on, it was named after the street, um, but it, it was quite funny. Then we have the, the shack church. And um, again, I have fellowshiped in a shack church. The only thing that tells me it's a church here is that, that cross. And um, this is not great architecture as well. It's, it's extremely hot during summer and cold in winter. Um, I uh, understand it is quite a practical, um, but it's, it's, it's not a, a great sol solution to to uh church, church architecture at all um 
the, 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 the what one in Dorb would, would make much more sense. And then we have the Marquis Church. Um, it's nice and quick and it, 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 easy to set up, and it's not expensive. Um, so it works quite well. Again, I was a part of a Baptist church in in Nairobi that that I met in a huge uh, tented church. Then we have the mega church, um, like the one we see here, which is uh, based upon um, Rivers Church <laughs> or um, uh, 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 the, the sort of churches that you would see in the uh, States. Um, I, I, I believe um, Steve who's here has, has uh, designed a few 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 of those. Um, if you can search Steve's web, website, um, he's done some outstanding work. He's he's done uh, far far better work than, than, than I ever have, and he he is uh, a, a spe specialist in church art architecture. So go and see his his work if you can. So this this is just an idea of those towers that I have found in Africa. But there's one more. It's this one here. Uh, okay, there we go. This is vernacular church architecture. Um, I'm not saying it's at its best, but it's a good example. Now, I'm, I'm not suggesting that we design churches like this for to, 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 to today. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that there is at least one example um, of vernacular church architecture. It was built a long time ago. Um, these are uh, uh, rock-hewn uh, churches. This one is called St. George in Ethiopia, um, which, would, which would obviously come from the Coptic Ethiopian church. And then to your right inside, this is the, the inside of this church. I can tell because just before I went to pre pre present, I was just going through my slides, and then I saw on the, the second picture, bottom um, left, you can see that the keyhole. And then I, I matched it up with those keyholes in the picture on the, the left hand side. So that's how I know it's, it's, it is the same church. There are 11 of these kinds of churches in this part of the world. It is the only true vernacular church architecture I have found in Africa. Let that, let that sink in. Um, and then what, what I did was to look at the construction motifs of Sol Solomon's t t temple. I wanted to know what what does the temple teach us? Is it something that, that we could learn and then apply some of what I learned from that into a vernacular church architecture in Africa? And this is what I found. I found 12 um, motifs. So the first one is that the temple was built for the praise of God's name. As you know, um, King to David had in mind to build it, um, but then God said no, and so his son Sol Solomon built it. Um, but the, the the main purpose for the temple is the praise of God's name. Then there is, um, which is new to me, a hi hybrid use of local and outsourced skilled labor. What what surprised me was that. King Solomon approached, just to make sure I get the guy's name right, um, King Hiram, I think it was, King Hiram, um, from, from, um, from, uh, um, from, the, from the Phoenicians, um, which is northwest of Israel. And of course, there's a great forest there um, where you have cedarwood. And so what Sol, Sol, Solomon did is that he made an agree, agreement with his king and, and asked him to supply the wood with school, with school labor, and he agreed to, 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 uh, to feed his workers. Um, so I, I always thought that the temple was made only by the he, he, the Hebrews. It's it's not true. A, a lot of the skilled labor 
and the and the craftsmen actually were outsourced. There certainly was a lot of uh, P people from Israel who who got got involved. Um, yeah, so so you have a hybrid use of um, local and outsourced skill labor and and materials as well, wood and stone especially. What 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 they did with the wood is that they would cut the wood down, to, to take them to the um the, the uh, ships, and, and then sell, sell them by by, by sea. And then dock at the port, the, the port, and then bring the wood to Jerusalem, and then begin construction there. The temple design was beautiful and sacred. Just read the text. The uh, text is um, got it here. One, one Kings one two eight. Um, it is immaculate. The the way the temple is uh, uh, described. Um, again for the praise of God's name. The temple celebrated cre cre creativity and art and art history. Um, in some parts of the temple, the walls were lined with gold. The, the, the floors, I think, had uh, cyp cypress wood. Um, but the way it's described, it's, it's, just, it's just beautiful. Um, Yeah. Okay. Then the the temple employed tech, tech, technology. There was there is at least one instance that the hinge on the door um, was quite a, a a fascinating piece of work. Um, I will see if I can find what I, I wrote about that for you. Um, I don't know if I can find it so quickly. I don't want to waste too much time. Um, yeah, I won't wait. Uh, it's right here. So um, the, the 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 door turned on pivots. Pi, 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 this or the word for this hinge is called gililim, um, and it, it turned on pi, pi, pivots. Um, so the, this word um, can mean a, a a revolving door, but may also be a door with a spigot. Hinge or a door with some sort of a cylinder mech mechanism, and that that's this big door. If you if you see the temple, that big door that, that you see, um, I can't actually point it on my slide, but I'm sure you can see it there. Um, then that temple has good found stations, as any good uh, 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 temple or bull. bull, 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 bull building should the temple the temple entrance was celebrated i want to go go um uh to 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 the side so you can see this large door right then go to your left and you can see a, a smaller door and then what is uh, like a portico um so you have this build up of three three Threshold to so the the main part of the temple itself, but yet it is still it's, it's, it's celebrated. But both both those doors are celebrated. Um, it makes me think what we should do to the entrance of, of our church, church, churches. Um, the the temple facilities facilities and furniture were meticulously built. What is quite fascinating here is that King. King Hiram got involved himself. Well, we don't know if it was himself. The, the text does say that he began to carve and do certain work on the temple. But it's unclear if it was him himself or some of his workers. Um, but the, 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 uh, the text does, does use, use his name. Um, and then the temple was worthy of God. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that for the sake of time, as important as it is. Um, and then the temple had a construction timeline, um, which isn't really going to impact on what I'm going to say next. Uh, but still, that's, 
those are some of the themes that I found in the temple. And now what I'm trying, going to try and do is see how we could take some of those, not all of those, those themes, and bring them into a a, a African a, a African vernacular church architecture. And here they are here. So um, when we design church architecture, we need to be intentional about the purpose of the church. What, what is the church building being built for? Um, yes, it is a place to 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 to, to worship, but what else? What what else is it about? Um, what does the church architecture tell, or what what story does your church architecture tell? Think think about your own church. What what story does your church building tell those who drive past it? The the, the same should apply here. Um, I, I know in the past I've critiqued certain styles of, of church architecture, but that's because. I believe that it does it does not tell a story about who God is and who we are, and, and it should it should tell a story to to to, to the world. Um, think think of your church architecture as a preaching tool, if you like. Um, what is um, what I got from the temple is this next point. Hybrid tech, 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 hybrid technology, um, the use of both local and outsourced. Let me try again. Both um, local and outsourced local materials and um, labor. Then. Um, what 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 vernacular materials and te te technologies could be used to build with? Um, in the temple, we had that wood and uh, and stone. What what can we use in the nearby? What what kind of wood can we use that is close by? What what kind of stone? Um, who who is uh, around our church that um, that can build? Is is it? Anyone in the church who, who who can lay bricks or cut stone? These are the sort sort of questions that, that we should ask ourselves. Um, I know we as evangelicals might not like the phrase "sacred space," but I think it is important that we think of the church architecture as sacred space because it is special. It's got a it's a special, unique function. And it is there to worship God in. And if that's the case, what should it look like? How should the space function? Entrances, how do we accentuate the entrance of the church to welcome those who attend or to welcome those who will, who will pass your church? Uh, re respond, to, you, you, respond to unique conditions. What would your church architecture look like if you live somewhere where it's dry and hot and there's not much rain, or where there is a lot of rain and and it is quite humid, how how would the the um, the shape of your of your architecture respond to 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 that? And how would the spaces work? Um, there, there is so much more to say, but I see I don't have that, that much time. Um, how, how do we communicate meaning of ritual practices? In other words, how do we create a space to celebrate the Lord's Tupper that is meaningful or, or back to Tism? Um, and then think about how the church architecture responds to nature and the in environment, the, the trees, the landscape, the, the ground, or perhaps there's a, a sloping ground. How does your 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 church body respond to those those issues? Um, and make the best use 
of nature as you can. Um, and then what about tasteless buildings in cityscapes? Um, what 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 might that look like? Um, I know some somebody might ask a quick question about that, so I, I'll just leave that there for now. But it, it is a good a good quick, quick question to to ask. Okay, here are some examples. Um, these are oh, this is what I would call contemporary architecture in. Africa. So there are a few students from overseas who come and they work in South Africa and in fact in other parts of the world as well. And um, they, they they find out what is the the vernacular of that that place, and then begin to build. And this this is a a home for handicapped children in South South Africa, designed by Base Habitat. Um, you can't see it so well, but this is actually made by Wattle and Daub, um, which is a brick and mud. Um, I once in Kenya was deep in the bush, in fact, not far from where the, the Al Shabaab were tra 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 training. And kept, my wife said, let's, let's help this pastor build um, his, his, uh, his home. And so we, for for a day, we we uh, built um, a few a, a few walls for him with with mud, and um, the the timber structure was there, but we just took the mud and then um, put the mud on the the timber frame. That's that's what you're seeing here. It works well and it stands. It's a, a good example. Here's. Um, a work that is a um, a, a, a pre preschool, and you, you you can see how some of the walls are made from the earth that's right there. You see the the wall on the the left hand side, and then the the, the ground in the picture on the right on the right hand side. And then take note of the way those windows are used. They round, small round windows that um. Create something interesting. This is made by students. Um, again, a great piece of work that is made from earth. That's that's right there on your site. No need to pay pay for um, bricks or concrete. This was fun. I I was trying to find some some pictures to show you um, some examples. And um, I saw this one, and I thought, oh, this looks so nice. I wonder where this one is. And then I found out that this is actually done close, quite close by to where I, I live. I, I've not been here, but it is more or less close by. Um, it's, it's not the kind of Af African architecture you would find in this part of, of Africa. So in that sense, it's not vernacular in, in the strictest sense. But these shapes are used in other parts of um, Africa and perhaps in, in South, South, South Africa. But what made this one fun is that the name, look look at the name, Jason Erlang Architects. I worked with him in my first year. Um, he, 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 he and I worked, worked as a team for the same prayer, prayer, prayer in the same practice for, 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 for my job. So it was um, fun to see his work, not not knowing that this was him. And then I said, oh, that, that's Jay, 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 Jason's work. Um, so I have put it there. This, this is made just by sandbags. So it's, it's bags that you would buy. Fill that with sand from the, the site and then build the wall, walls. Um, in this sense, it is. Uh, 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 vernacular architecture. I've got a few more slides, and I know that time is almost up. But I would be keen to get through these next three three slides. And the one has text, and um, two of them don't have that much text. Um, okay, so form aesthetics for uh, African vernacular church architecture. What you see here, th this picture. Is a great example of what I have learned through this 
paper, paper. Now, this, this picture is not an example of what vernacular is, but it is achieving those things that I am, am, am going to pick up on. Um, and, and in that sense, it is a good example. Um, but ju just wait until the end. Um, so we, we need to think what, 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 what things in church architecture should we think about to create a, a, a good um, vernacular church ar ar architecture? The first one is floor layout. How, how should we arrange the, the seats in the church? Um, in this case, you can see that they are round. In some churches, you have a semicircle. In some churches, you have just a, a, a linear succession of seats. Of seats. Um, in the articles that I've read, they've said that that is now um, out of vogue and, quite frankly, does not work well. So we should start to think about how, how do we arrange our seating. Um, and of course, this circle is a, a good option. Um, my the church I attend is not a good example um, on this, but if you've got a church space and that's what you have, well, that's what you have. But if you will create something new, let's think think out of the box. The, the um, uh, I forget what it's called now. There was a, a thing I wanted to pick up on, which I thought was interesting. Um, what is sometimes called the uh, where is it the the fellowship hall is no longer a good idea um, in in contemporary church architecture. We we need to reinvent that um, again. I know Steve has done some some of that, and there are some some churches who who have already re rethought. How, how they might look. Um, then um, architectural form. How does your form relate to the, the, the context? Again, as I spoke about the, the harsh sun or rain, wind, that, that whole sort of thing. The questions are coming in quite fast, a bit of rush up. Um, openings, uh, windows. How will we um, put the windows in the church? Um, will we use big ones, which can work too, or small, smaller ones, or a, or a pattern of small ones? If you see in this picture, try and find where the windows are. You have clear, clear, clear stories at the top, and then below, if you look at the um, right-hand side of the picture, you can see eight square, eight small square, Windows that look like they are are saying glass. Well, I, I assume as that. I assume as that it, it could obviously be pictures or some some kind of icon. But um, be be that as it may, it would work well as windows. Um, think about how your how parts of the the church opens up onto public space, so that those who walk past are intrigued and might want to explore and see see what is going on inside and there's a lot more that i have said but i i'm just i just don't have time roof and sea ceilings how would you create a roof that is vernacular or a sea ceiling um here here in this picture you can see the way they have ribbed this roof um it's beautifully done and then right in the center you 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 you, you, you feel this um, stained glass light well um, and don't say that that cannot be done in vernacular architecture because I, I will sh uh, sh uh, show you that it can be done and has been done on the next slide. Um, my, uh, my one boss, Andrew T Thompson, once said to me, think of the roof as the fifth facade because the, the roof is as important as the, the front facade, the the the, the 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 front of any building, and then vernacular art. Um, what what kind of art could, uh, what what kind of art does the culture have that we could employ and make you, you, you do something again in this picture? 
um, you can see that there's there are, are some artworks on the sides of the church. The, as I said, this picture is actually from a, a church in in England, but it's doing what I am t talking about. Um, and then um, exterior space is, I should say, almost as important as the internal space. How are we going to arrange the external space? How is it going to invite people into the church building? Does the exterior space have a place to meet? And for kids who play, think, think, think about that as you explore vernacular church, church architecture. Um, okay, so um, this uh, one last look of, look at this. There's more I could say, like about lights and sounds. Um, I mean, light and audio, but I'm not going to have a chance to do that. Okay, so the picture on the left hand side is from England, right? But look at the picture on the right hand side. This is the King's Hut in Rwanda. We can create vernacular church architecture, large spaces. It can be done. I, I like this picture because it's it's got some of the architectural elements that you see in the picture on the left hand side. Look at the um, that that ribbed sea, sea, sea ceiling. And then compare that to the king's hut. Look at those vertical um, posts that hold the roof up. You've got the same in the um, in the cathedral. Look at that light well. There's that. It's it's a lot smaller, of course, but it's got a, a light well, as we see in the picture on the left hand side. So, all this to say that if we have Great vernacular church architecture. I mean, not much. Let me. Uh, I'll restate that. If we have vernacular architecture for a king, what about a vernacular church architecture for the king of kings? Thank you.